It's Restaurant Production Expert here. I'm with Gannon from Universal Audio. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. We were in London last week drinking beer. Yes, and we were. Were you eating pie? Was it or fish and chips? I can't remember. In my I local. Had, I had, uh, what did you call it? A scrap and um, bubble and scrape. Oh, you had bubble and scrape with yeah. sausages. Yes, exactly. Yes, anyway. And I loved it. They weren't DSP. They were completely native, those sausages. That's anyway, right. <laughs> lots of announcements. Yes. Uh, we've seen these three new Apollos. Yep. So let's, we, tell us about the kind of overarching philosophy of the, the refresh first. The overarching concept here is we've just taken the Apollos and it's next generation. So Made them better. And better. So Apollos, you know, started out in 2012 and now due to customer requests, due to our own pursuit of excellence, we've improved the audio spec. Um, the A to D's, the D to A's have completely different converters, all the surrounding circuitry, the analog circuitry and stuff. That's the more, more important stuff anyway. And so they've designed for measurably best of class specifications in terms of dynamic range and THD plus noise low. And now we've also optimized the way they actually sound. We're so happy with the way they actually sound. So that's that's the front running news. Which kind of leads me to, it feels like the discussion that you had with James at NAM was the kind of heralding only half the story that console two was just the, the half of two parts of a story this is the this is the second half of it it kind is that of a good I, kind of summary almost because you've got i mean console 2.0 is really our foundation to do all kinds of stuff so that is the it's uh, making the software support as you saw in the when we were looking at the software there's new features in console 2.0 that allow us to do uh, you know add the monitor button add the switching so uh, add the monitor bypass all those things are now the framework is there for us to add more things there's lots of space there's lots of uh, capability in the console now, one of the things I love, and I said when I saw the kind of announcement of the Thunderbolt technology we're using, is this ability to grow a system. That's right. So, with Thunderbolt 2 that you've now employed, basically, how many can you string together? You can string together four Apollos, mm -hmm. mix and match any Apollo, uh, including uh, next generation Apollos with the original um, classic Apollo, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, th those, and it, they can be mixed with the original Thunderbolt 1 card or the Thunderbolt 2 card. We we don't use, uh, you know, we're not maxing out the bandwidth of the Thunderbolt bus, so it doesn't matter which card we can mix, so it's really, truly mix and match across the whole product line. And are they able to share all the DSP between each other? No, the DSP, synchronous DSP is not possible okay. at this point, so what you have as you aggregate the uh, the uh, units together, the mixer itself travels across, so aux buses from right. one speak to the same mixer, but the DSPs, in order to maintain the low latency path, have to stay in that interface. Okay, but when you're mixing, you can use all the DSP power. Yeah, those are actually that, free that, that, to go anywhere. Okay, cool. Now, uh, interestingly enough, uh, we have uh, the, tell me about the 8P. What's the 8, where did the 8P come from? The 8P came from a direct customer request to have, I need more than four preamps. I want more preamps to, so I can take one interface, do a location recording, or, you know, uh, grow a larger console. I want, you know, 24 uh, Neve preamps and have a little console here. So it's basically just an outgrowth of a customer request to have more preamps, more Unison-enabled preamps in a single system. Now, three black fronts and a silver front, uh, because I'm guessing that there is sometimes people saying, hey, where's the love for the Windows users? Exactly. Is that what the Silverfront's about? That's what it's all about. And it's it's just reinforcing our commitment to the Windows platform. You know, we'd, we're we taking quite a bit of, uh, you know, flack from the Windows side of people saying, you're abandoning us and leaving us in the dust. And that's not true. We are very committed to the Windows platform. The Windows, the Apollo Firewire is you know, true to that, we've price reduced it to 19.99. It's the least expensive quad Apollo we've ever had. So, you know, there's some enticement there, um, and it's completely compatible with our PCIe cards, the FireWire satellite. So, the product range is there. Uh, all the plugins that we release are compatible with the FireWire or Thunderbolt branch. And Console 2.0 is coming to FireWire this fall. So, we're, you know, you have to do the some work first, and then uh, bring the others along, and that's what we're doing. And I understand a little bit tells me there's something special coming from Windows users later in the year as well. There you might be. We can't talk about that. Can't talk about we can't it. talk about it, but, that's, that's, but that's, that's not just a rumor. No. Windows users are still loved by UAD. Very much so. Okay, that's that's great to hear. Yeah. Talk to me, we, when we were in London, we had a quick chat about uh, this whole thing about clocking. Yeah. Because you, there's something magical about the clocking, isn't there? How are you clocking these units? The, the clocking is via Thunderbolt, and Thunderbolt is, uh, it's basically just a big wide pipe that you can send different streams of different information down the same thing. What we do with clocking is a, 
a star clocking uh, configuration. So as a, even though you're connecting multiple devices through uh, a Thunderbolt chain, we're able to just pass the clock at the Thunderbolt port. Rather than going into the unit and re-clocking it and spitting out a looped sync uh, topology, we do a, a star clock topology. So every interface gets the same frame edge. That's what that. That's what star clocking. Does. So there's no there's no there are no soft edges and no frame issue. And there's no reclocking, unit to unit. That's the. I think that's probably the more. So it's all first thing. generation clocking to every unit. That's right. That's really really cool. Yeah. Let's talk about price points then and shipping dates. What's what what's available now? Right now, uh, the eight Apollo eight has been shipping for a whole two days. Yeah. And uh, the eight P, the sixteen, and the Apollo Fireware are coming in the following weeks, just a few weeks away. Fantastic. Now, what I've got you here as well, yeah. let's be rock stars for a moment. Love it. New plug-in. New plug-in. And not nope. any old plug-in, not any kind of like, hey, this is this is sounds like something. Yeah, that's right. You've got a Marshall, a real, a vintage Marshall. The first uh, Marshall branded plug-in. Official. Plug yeah, it's the first official Marshall plug-in in the world. It's the Plexi Super Lead 1959, and it is modeled after the uh, studio grade, the, the museum grade Marshall from the Marshall Museum. They pulled it out. Uh, Softube did the uh, design work. Tony Platt did all the setups and the miking and the impulse responses. Let's uh, just stop you there for a moment. Tony Platt, let's just, for those that don't know, yes. ACDC, Motorhead. Yeah. Did a lot of rock guitars. Yeah. So he knows his onions. He really does. And they sound great. I, my, one of my favorite things is the preset menu. You get over 50 presets with the darn things. Of like rock classics. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's a good one. There's <laughs> another good one. Oh, there's another good one. And it, so 50 times that. And that just gives you a great place to start. You get microphone mixing. Uh, three types of microphones. Uh, you you can, get ribbons, electrets, and dynamics, don't you? Exactly. And so you can... Uh, choose your microphone type and blend them. So you have two close microphones and one uh, room microphone to get those tones together. There's an onboard EQ, low and high. There's an output level. Uh, you can bypass the, the miking all together. So if you do want to just use the amp and then you know go into a speaker simulation or use it as a reamping device, uh, you know, or reamp it rather, you can come out straight out of the amplifier, go into a clean amp and you know mic your own amp. So it's a it gives you all the flexibility that you could ask for, and these just it sounds great. When's that shipping? That will ship with the release apps following uh, 8.02. 8.02 is uh, is required to use the uh, next generation Apollos. So that's just basically turning the firmware on. And so the release that follows directly, which will be you know within the following weeks, is going to be have the Marshall and some others. Yes. Yeah. Let's rock. Let's rock. Thanks, Gannon. Yeah. Thanks, Russ.